Hi everyone and welcome to this episode of The Stitch Sessions. This tutorial is a follow-up to one of our crochet quick chats all about decreasing stitches. In this video, I'm going to show you the three different ways of making a triangular shape using decreases as well as increases and also from the center out. This will be a great aid to any other project where you will be using increasing stitches and or decreasing stitches, especially for things like v-neck collars or anything that would take a slanted or triangular shape. So let's get started. For this particular project, I just happen to be using a 5.25 millimeter hook. You can use the hook uh, size that you like as long as it matches the yarn that you're using. So I'm just do using these for examples. So let's get going here. So the first triangle we're going to do is we're going to create the triangle from the bottom and work our way up. So to begin, I just thought I would do a quick little sketch up of the different methods we're going to be talking about today. So the first method we're gonna show you is how to work a triangular shape from the bottom and work our way up to a triangle shape, okay? So then you can really see that the triangle shape takes shape like that. So this is from the bottom up. Wow, what a terrible arrow. Um, okay, the other method is to work your triangle from the top down. So we would begin at the top here and continuously Increase. So the whole time we're doing this, we're still working in rows. So again, you can see your triangular shape. And the difference is this one would begin from the top and work its way down. Okay, so this is the first method. This is the second method. And the third method we will show you is how to start a triangle from the center and work our way out, okay? So essentially you're gonna be working in the round, which funny enough, it's not a rounded shape, but we're creating it by starting in the center and then building each round out, okay? So let's begin with method one. To begin, you will place a slip knot on your hook. Then you will chain the desired number of chains for your triangle. For me, because I'm just doing a swatch, I'm just going to chain 11. And 11. Once you have your chain, you wanna make sure it's not twisted, okay? And now we're going to do a single crochet in the second chain from the hook. So not this one, but this one here is the second. We're gonna just place a single crochet. Now I happen to be doing these examples using single crochets, but you can certainly do this with double crochets or half double crochets as well. The principle of creating your triangle or triangular shape will be the same. So I'm just using the single crochet stitch and I'm gonna place one into each stitch now, going all the way across. So this will be my first row. And this is how you would begin any first row of a triangular motif. Okay, so I have just finished my first row and that's one single crochet into each stitch all the way across. And I now have 10 stitches. So remember we went into the second chain from the hook in order to do the single crochets. So I now have 10 stitches in my first row. 
Now we're going to chain one and turn our work. And this is where we're going to do our first decrease stitch or also known as stitch two together. So what we're trying to do here is start to create this slant going upward, okay? So we've chained one and I'm gonna go right back into that same, right back into that very first stitch here. I'm gonna place my hook and pull up a loop just like I'm gonna do a regular single crochet. What I'm not gonna do is I'm not gonna resolve it at this point by yarning over. What I will do is go into the very next stitch, insert my hook and pull up another loop. I now have three loops on my hook. Then I'm gonna yarn over again and this time I will pull through all three of those loops. So what we've done is we've now created one stitch from two in the previous row, okay? So this is what we call a decrease because we're gonna decrease the number of stitches in the next row, also known as stitch two together, okay? So now we're going to proceed to just place one single crochet into each stitch for the rest of the way, except we want to stop when we've got two stitches remaining on the other side. So in order to create a triangle, I wanna make sure that I have that slanted edge on both sides. If you were creating this uh, to be a V-neck in a top or a sweater, you would most likely only decrease on one of these sides. Okay, I'm coming up to the end here. I've got one more. And now I have two stitches remaining. I have one, and I have two. I am now gonna stitch these two together. I'm gonna insert my hook, pull up a loop, insert, and pull up another loop, okay? So I didn't resolve the first single crochet. I'm gonna yarn over and pull through all three. So at the end of round two, my work is looking something like this. So you should be able to see a little bit. It's probably not obvious just yet. It is starting to squish in a bit. So I went from eight, I'm sorry, I went from 10 stitches. Because I decreased one on each side, I now have eight stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So every time you decrease, you're decreasing the number of stitches by two because you're decreasing on both sides. So let's continue. At the end of row two, you'll chain one, turn your work, and this is how you're gonna continue until your triangle is formed. You will place your hook into the very first stitch and pull up a loop. Then you'll go into the very next stitch, pull up a loop, You'll then yarn over and pull through all three, which brings those two stitches together. And now you're probably really seeing that it's starting to slant in. You continue on as we did before, one stitch into each stitch until you have two remaining at the end of your row. So in this example, we're showing you how to decrease at the beginning of a row and at the end. Okay. I have two stitches left. I'm gonna insert, pull up a loop, insert into the next one, pull up another loop. I'm gonna yarn over and pull through all three, okay? So I've decreased by two stitches again. I now have six stitches in my third row, okay? So each row is going to decrease. Moving on to row four, you're gonna chain one and turn your work. And again, into the very first stitch, you'll pull up a loop. Into the very next stitch, you pull up a loop. Yarn over and pull through all three. So this, you keep going in this fashion, and each time you decrease on each end, your two sides are gonna close in together. So eventually, you're not gonna have any single stitches left in the middle, okay? so you should ha end up having two stitches left at the end. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. 
and you're going to continue working your pattern by simply stitching across and then when you have two stitches left, always make sure you leave the last two, you're going to stitch those two together, also known as a decrease stitch. Okay. So see, now row four, one, two, three, now has four stitches. And I'm just gonna finish this off with you guys since we've only got two more rows left. So I've chained one and turned. I'm going to decrease here. Two stitches together. And look at that, I only have two stitches left here as well. So I'm gonna do another decrease. Okay, so you're pulling up loops and then pulling through all of them, okay? Now I'm gonna chain one and turn, and I actually only have two stitches left. So I'm gonna insert my hook, pull up a loop, insert into the next one, pull up another loop, and I'm gonna pull through all three. And that is the apex of my triangle. So if I set that down, now remember this is just a small swatch, so you know, the triangle is smaller, but so you can see this is the starting row and then we kept working our way up until we reached one single stitch left, okay? So that is how you form a triangle. Now, of course, you're gonna see the what looks like these little bumpy edges. Um, I would assume that whatever project you're doing this for, maybe a modular project or maybe it's part of a bigger um, piece, that this would then get some kind of finishing row or you're gonna sew it to another project. But this is a triangular shape from the bottom working its way up using decreased stitches. In the next example, I'm gonna show you how we begin this triangle from the top and work our way to the bottom. I'm gonna chain three And then I want to go back into the very first chain and I want to do a single crochet. Okay, so what that does is it creates the top of our point here and technically we have single crochet stitch which we just created and then we have our chain right here. Okay, so technically it's seen as two single crochets, and the very first chain counts as one. Okay, hopefully you can see the point there. So that's technically row one of the top of our triangle. We'll then chain one, turn our work, and right back into this first stitch, we're gonna place one single crochet and now we're gonna go into the top of that chain and we're gonna place another single crochet. So this just kind of makes it much more defined where the top of our triangle is. Okay, so you have something that looks like that. Now, row three, we're gonna chain one and turn our work. And now we're gonna do is we're gonna go back into the very first stitch and we're going to increase. So we're gonna place one single crochet and then we're gonna go back into the same stitch and place another single crochet. So remember, to increase means we're increasing the number of stitches. So we did two stitches into one at the end and so that's what we're gonna do on each side to create that flared out look. Into this next stitch here, we're gonna place a single crochet. So it can be a little funny to see just because that's where we chained. Okay, one. Then we're gonna go back into that very same stitch, insert our hook and place another single crochet. Just like that. So you can definitely see the triangular shape taking place. Okay, and then we'll chain one 
and turn our work. And now we're going to place an increased stitch on either end. So now we're starting to get some, some width here. So in the very first stitch, you're going to place two single crochets. So we have one and two into the next stitch we place one single crochet. So now we only save the increases for the very end stitches. Okay, so I have two stitches there. Into the next stitch I place one single crochet. And now in the very last stitch I'm going to place two because I want to increase the number of stitches at each end. Okay, so I placed another one in there. Just like that. Okay, so now I am up to one, two, three, four, five, six stitches. And you can really see the triangular shape taking hold. Okay, I'm going to do another row. So I'm going to yarn over, turn my work, and insert an increase into the first stitch there. Okay, and with this method, you can just keep going and going and going and make your triangle as wide or as tall as you like. Whereas starting from the bottom up method, you really want to, you, you really kind of already want to know the size that you want to make, right? So if you start with 10, for example, it is going to have a definite end. So if you start with 20, then you're going to have a bit more height. When you start from the top, um, you can just go and go and go until you are happy with what you've got. Okay, so I'm not going to do too many more, but now we've got some regular stitches to work into. So I'm just simply placing one single crochet into each stitch until I have one left. And this is my last one here, and I'm going to place an increase. So that means I'm going to place one single crochet and then back into that same stitch I'm going to place a second single crochet. Okay, And again in this example I'm using single crochets but you can do the same thing with uh, double crochets, half doubles. So if I turn it over you can see that my triangular shape is taking hold. Okay, I'm going to do one more row with you and chain one, turn your work, okay, and insert, place two. Now, uh, I let me just kind of uh, address this. Some people, when they're doing single crochets and they chain one, they don't necessarily go into this very first one here because some people consider the chain one as representing one. And that all is a personal preference and also depends on how much, of, if you're a tight crocheter, you definitely want to be using this first one. If you're a little bit looser, yes, you would go into here because technically that's creating the one and then you would go again in there to create your increase. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do for this one. They're both fine. Um, it's completely up to you. Okay, so I'm just going to do one into each just to show you. Okay. And right through there. And then I have one more left. And I'm going to increase by placing one and then two. Okay. So you can really see the triangles. So now I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So we keep increasing. Like in the first triangle, we keep decreasing by two. Because we increase on both sides, we keep increasing by two. Okay, so in this case, I ended up having ten. Now these are two different kinds of yarn, even though we ended up having ten. This one is a cotton blend, and this one is the Bernat Handicrafter cotton. Well, actually, not a bad comparison. Okay, so this triangle worked from the bottom up. This triangle worked from the top down. Okay, and you can tell 
Another way you can tell is where is the tail? Is the tail at the top or is the tail at the bottom? Okay. And now I'm going to show you my favorite way to make a triangle, and that is starting from the center. Okay, to begin your triangular motif from the center, you can use either a cinch circle or a chain three method, chain three or chain four. Um, I will keep it easy by using a chain three method. So I'm going to start again with a slip knot and I'm going to chain three. Okay. You might want to chain four depending on um, how thick your yarn is. Hopefully you can see that. I'm going to go back into the very first stitch and I'm going to slip stitch to join. This will create a little bit of a circle. It actually should create a bit of a ring if I can fit my hook in there. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do, you know what guys, I'm going to do a chain five just to make my center circle uh, bigger. I usually like using a cinch center, uh, also known as a magic ring or a magic circle. Um, because I like the center of my projects to really be cinched shut. But if you're super, super beginner, I want to make this really nice and easy and accessible for you. So I'm going to start with the chain circle method. So I'm going to chain five, two, three, four, five. And it just makes things a little easier for you to see. So again, I'm going to find that very first chain. Don't confuse it with your slip knot. And I'm going to slip stitch. to join the chains into a circle. There we go, now we can see it. So you can see it's, it's made a little ring, okay? Now for this example, I am going to use the double crochet stitch just um, because it'll sit a little bit more spread out and it'll be easier to see. But you can use any stitch you like. So those of you that um, are very familiar with granny squares, this is gonna be a very similar um, formula of doing it. So I'm going to chain three to begin and this will count as the height of a double crochet stitch. Now remember a triangle has three points and three sides. So that is what we need to create. So we are going to create our first side. That's going to consist of three double crochets. Remember the chain three already counts as our first one. We're going to insert our hook into the center of that ring and we're going to pull up a loop. Okay, We're going to yarn over and pull through the first two only, yarn over and pull through the next two. So we've just created our first official double crochet stitch. We're going to do that again, yarn over, insert into the ring, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. We now have three double crochets inside the ring. So remember the chain three counts as one. Whenever you have three double crochets clustered together, we call that a granny shell. And that's what's gonna create the first side of our triangle. We now want to create a corner. So we're going to chain two. Now some people may chain three to create a corner. It depends on how bulky your yarn is or how tight or loose of a crocheter you are. I'm pretty even keeled on my tension, so chain two is going to be plenty for me. I'm now going to go back into the ring and place three double crochets again. I'm going to yarn over, insert, so there's one, and I'm going to work right over that tail and get it out of the way. There's two. Oops. And there's three. Okay. So now I have a side, a corner, and another side. So we need to form another corner. So we're going to chain two. And we're going to go back into that ring and create our last side. So that means we need to place one more granny shell stitch, which consists of three double crochets. 
So I'm going to just try and work over that tail there. So I have one, two, and three. Okay, you're probably thinking, hey, it's kind of looking like a square. But hold on one second. We have two corners. We need one more corner. So we're going to chain two. And now we're going to do is we're going to find the top of that chain three that we first started with. So don't go into this one because this belongs to this double crochet here. Hopefully you guys can see that with the gray yarn. So the top of my chain three is right there. I'm going to insert my hook. Whoops. And I'm going to slip stitch to join the very first round. Okay, so if I take that out, that is, believe it or not, a triangle. Okay, so I know it doesn't really look like much of one right now, but if I stretch it out like that, it's just that the join is there, so it makes it tricky. So that is our little triangle there, starting from the center out. Now, generally speaking, this would be a motif that we would continue to build, and we're going to do that now. Okay, so if I were just to leave this on its own, this would be what we would call a granny triangle. Three sides and three corners. Okay, but let's build this up a little bit so we can really see the triangular shape take shape. The triangular shape take shape. Hmm. Okay, so now we're going to do, we want to work out of a corner to begin our next round. So we want to slip stitch over into the next two stitches. So I'm going to go into the very next one here. I'm just going to slip stitch and that helps me move along so that I can land in that corner and I've slip stitched there, just like that. Great, now I'm in the corner. To build up a corner, we want to place a granny shell, a chain two, and a granny shell. We know that a granny shell consists of three double crochets. So we've got to begin with a chain three to give us our height, and then two more double crochets. One, and two. Now we need to create a corner, which is chaining two, and then another shell. One, two, and three. Okay, so now you can really see the points coming out to play. Okay, let's move on to the next corner. So we want to build that corner, so we're going to place three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets. Okay, so insert into the space. So now we're going to have spaces to work into, which will make things a little bit easier. And I've got one more. That's a shell. I'm going to chain two and now work another shell. Okay, so that's two more. There we go, there's our next corner. Okay, now we go into our last corner. We need to build it up and you know what we're gonna do. Shell, chain two, shell. So I'm gonna let you finish that off because I think you're becoming a pro at these corner stitches now. And then I'll pick up with you guys when we're continuing on to build our shape. And I just finished another corner here so you can really see our triangle taking shape. So now I have another space, so I'm going to do a shell. Now some people will also chain one between the shells. I tend not to just because I don't feel I need to, but um, some people that are really tight crocheters, I absolutely recommend chaining one in between each space. But I'm a-okay. So, oops. Now some of you that may have seen my Christmas tree ornament applique, 
may find this technique quite similar, okay? Because this is the basis of what we use to create it, um, was creating three corners and three sides, but we did it a little bit more on a solid um, fashion, but I'll put a link in the description box down below just so you can see the comparison of how the two look side by side. Um, just the main principle is to remember the core idea of the shape that you're looking to make. So we know a triangle has three corners and three sides, right? So now we're back up to a corner, so I'm going to place my shell, chain three, and shell. So now we're using our chain threes to really help our triangular shape sit nicely. So there's my chain three, and then I yarn over, insert, and I'm going to do another shell. And I'm going a little bit quicker here because I'm assuming at this point most of you are very familiar with your double crochet stitches. Okay, so see we've got our corner there. And now we've got a space here so we're just going to place one shell. So that's three double crochets. And we're coming back up to the corner. Okay, so now we find our the top of our chain three, which is right there. And we've closed off our triangle. Now, you may notice that my center is bubbling a bit, and that is because I started with the chain twos in the corners. And normally for a triangle, um, I would have done the chain three, but I was totally in granny square mode. So we want to make sure that our corners, like we've been doing in the following rows, shell, chain three, shell. And this will definitely help your work stay nice and flat. Look at that. So that's our triangle worked from the center out. And of course, just like working from the, the top down, you can just keep going and going and going until you get the size of your triangle that you like. Look at that, isn't that cool? Three different ways to create your triangle. So this one is from the center out. This one is from the top down. You can see all my tails here. And this one is from the bottom up, okay? So three different methods of creating your triangles and uh, that gives you three different options and it also helps you I'm really hoping that by showing you these three different ways this also helps you get a deeper understanding of how to structure your work especially when you're getting a little bit beyond beginner and really starting to play with shapes and how to shape your work okay so I hope you found this helpful and very useful if you have any other questions or, or if you find that I've missed something or didn't cover something that you were hoping that I, I would, please do leave me the questions in the comment box down below. Or you can always email me directly at info at crochetcrafty.com and I'm always super excited to help you. Um, and by the way, we now have a monthly newsletter and in that newsletter we always give away a free written pattern in that newsletter. So make sure to check that out. You can go to crochetcrafty.com and uh, sign up for the newsletter. We'll also leave a link for it in the description box down below as well. And if you haven't pressed that subscribe button already, what are you waiting for? If you love crocheting and hanging out with other crochet lovers, then this is the place you want to be. I always enjoy sharing my love of crochet with you and I upload a new video every Wednesday and every now and again I also upload an extra video called the Crochet Quick Chat and it's where I answer some of the most commonly asked crochet questions. So that's all for this week guys. I wish you all the best of luck on your crochet triangles and we will see you in the next session. Have a great day guys. Happy crocheting and take good care.